the Wheatstone Bridge type question. The Wheatstone Bridge type question. Now, to talk about the Wheatstone Bridge, a circuit like this is what is called as a Wheatstone Bridge. No problem. Named after a scientist, probably. And we are not going to go into all that history and all that historical aspect of it. We just want to know that in this particular circuit, if I ask you what is the value of equivalent capacitance between A and B, probably you'll get stuck. The reason is that this circuit is complex. You cannot say that these C1 and C2 are in series. Why? Because this one comes in middle, right? They're not in series. They're neither in parallel. So what to do? Had this C5 not been there, think about it. Had this C5 not been there, if this was absent, then this would have been such a simple question because then we could have easily told, okay, C1 and C2 are in series, C3 and C4 are in series and together they are parallel to each other, right? Together they are parallel to each other. Very simple. But how will you ignore the C5? How can you ignore the C5? And here comes the Wheatstone Bridge to our rescue. So Wheatstone Bridge, as we say it, can be of two different types. It can be a balanced or an unbalanced bridge. What we have to deal with now is a balanced bridge. So when do we say that a Wheatstone Bridge is balanced? When the potential difference across these two points is same. The potential difference across these two points is zero, which means potential at this terminal, if it is x, this is also equal to x. So potential difference across these two points is equal to zero. There is no potential difference. Now, if you have connected any circuital element between two points such that the potential difference itself is zero, that means this is of no use, right? Okay, this is of no use. So when it is in balanced condition, when we say that a Wheatstone bridge is in balanced condition, there is a particular condition when this is supposed to happen. That condition is that the ratio of C1 is to C3 should be equal to C2 is to C4. This ratio, if this ratio is equal, then you have equal value of potential here and here and hence C5 can be removed then and then probably you have simplified the circuit because now this is not there and if this is not there then you have a very simple circuit where C1 and C2 both of them are in series so we can write the value as C1 C2 divided by C1 plus C2 and C3 and C4 are also in series so I can write C3 C4 divided by C3 plus C4 and both of them are in parallel this will be the value of C equivalent simply did you understand all right now the question is how do we prove this how do we prove this? So, the method to prove it is by using Kirchhoff's laws only. Only way is to prove it by Kirchhoff's law. Actually, that is the logical method. Yes. But we'll try to use a shortcut to prove this relation. We'll try to use a shortcut. But let me also tell you one more thing. That we will deal with Wheatstone Bridge again when we come across resistances in current electricity. So it is not done and dusted over here. We are just talking about a weak strong bridge in, in context to the capacitor right now. All right. So we are saying that a weak stone bridge can be called as a balanced weak stone bridge. And for the time being, we are only going to deal with the balanced weak stone bridge. When the potential difference across this point and across this point, which is potential difference about C5 is equal to zero. There is no potential difference. If this is X, this is also X. All right. How do we prove this? Well, just logically, we'll try to prove it. But the actual proof, you will get it only and only through KVL and KCL. All right. So if you want, you can use that. You can go for the regular proof. You can go for the lengthy proof. Anyways, we'll see all those things when we deal with Wheatstone Bridge in current electricity. But here we just want to talk about how to deal with problems like this, how to solve questions based on this. But we'll need some kind of proof, isn't it? So let us say that this is V, this is V. Obviously, this point will be V and this is 0. So this point is V, this point is V. This is 0, this is also 0. All right. We'll try to prove the converse. We will say that if the potential at these two points are equal, if the potential at these two points are equal, then the ratio of C1 by C3 
will be equal to C2 by C4. Actually, what was supposed to be proved was obviously the opposite of it. We were supposed to prove that potential at these two points are equal. It only happens when this ratio is C1 by C3 is equal to C2 by C4. But what we are trying to do now is, we are trying to say that, okay, let's approach it in a different way. We are saying that we assume that potential over here is equal. If this is X, this is also X. No problem. And then, once we have assumed this, we are trying to prove that this can only happen, this can only happen when this ratio is same. All right. Shall we get started? All right. So, let us say that from here, some charge Q is moving along and then we get some charge. So, it gets divided into two parts. Let us say over here, we get charge Q1 and over here, we get charge Q2. Now, since it is at the same potential, since it is at the same potential, can I say the charge over here will be also Q1 because this point and this point is at same potential. So, this C5 does not come to pick into picture at all, which means C1 and C2 are in series. So, if Q1 appears over here in series, the charges will be same. So, this is also Q1 and if Q2 is over here, this is also Q2. Can I say that? No problem. Okay. Perfect. So, now how does the circuit looks like? This is the current status of the circuit. We have Q1 and Q1 over here and we have Q2 and Q2 over here. No problem. Now, let's try to write the expression of potential. Now, you see this point is at potential V and this is at potential X. So, if I talk about this first capacitor C1, capacitor having capacitance of C1 and charge Q1, what I can write about the potential? Potential difference, higher potential minus lower potential. That will be equal to V minus X will be equal to, V is equal to, remember the formula for a capacitor, Q by C, right? I can write it as Q1 is the charge divided by C1. No problem. What about this one? What I can write about this one? C. Q2 is the charge, C3. And what about the potential difference? It is also V minus X. So, V minus X is equal to Q2 by C3. Let's say this is equation number 1 and let's say this is equation number 2. When you equate them, what do you get? You get Q1 by C1 is equal to Q2 by C3. Can I write this? No problem. So, from here, what are you are getting? Q1 by Q2 is equal to C1 by C3. Just keep on following what I am trying to do. All right. So, this is, let us say, our result number 3. Perfect. Let us go ahead and let us write about the potential difference across C2 and across C4. Okay. So, across C2, the potential difference will be x minus 0 and that is going to be equal to what? That is going to be equal to q1 by c2. Can I write that? Yes. No problem. Similarly, across c4, can I write? x minus 0 is equal to q2 by c4. Again, if I equate them, what I get? I get q1 by c2 is equal to q2 by c4. Again, you try to find q1 by q2. What do you get? q1 by q2 is equal to c2 by c4. And let us say this is our equation number 4. What we have got now? What we can say? See? What we can say? We can certainly say now, by looking at equation number 3 and 4, we can certainly say that c1 by c3 is equal to c2 by c4. C1 by C3 is equal to C2 by C4. That's it. Which means that if this condition is true, only and only when the potential of these two points are equal to X and C5 does not come into picture at all. No problem. So, we have tried to prove it with a, in a converse manner. Not a problem, but I am sure that you have understood what I mean. No problem. So, when this Wheatstone bridge is balanced, then this C5 has nothing to do with it and we can directly see that C1 and C2 are in series, C3 and C4 are in series and together they are parallel to one another and that gives us a simplified result of this circuit or this type of circuit, right? So, you see, we can prove it. So, we told that, okay, let us assume at first itself that potential at this point and this point is same. 
So C5 has no role to play. And by assuming that, we found out that the result that we got is exactly C2 by C4 was equal to C1 by C3. No problem. So this by this is equal to this by this. Then we say that the Wheatstone bridge is a balanced Wheatstone bridge. The condition for balanced Wheatstone bridge, how will you check whether a Wheatstone bridge is balanced or not? Well, it's very simple. The condition to check for a balanced Wheatstone bridge is very simple. Just find the ratio of C1 is to C3 is equal to C2 is to C4. If this is same, then we say that the Wheatstone bridge is balanced. After that, once we have concluded that yes, it is a Wheatstone bridge and it is a balanced condition, then it becomes very simple because now we know C1 and C2 are in series, C3 and C4 are in series and together they are in parallel. So it's all about just applying the formula of series and parallel and this is what you get as an expression of C equivalent. I hope you have understood it, right? This is very simple. Such a simple question. All right.